Dos, to be honest. You know, David Horsman said it in the week that the start is the most important thing, and I think he's absolutely spot on. You know, those opening 10 or 15 minutes are really, really vital for any FA Cup game. Yeah, the FA Cup, the magic of the FA Cup, as ever, they'll be looking to use today. And with it being the game before Remembrance Sunday, both sides will observe. No, no sides. It looked as if they were going to go together. For the circle, but in the end, it's just the huddle for the Forest Green side and Scarborough to take kickoff. Wiles, the man on the centre spot to start for Scarborough. And as ever with non league games, it's a big, big day for the hosts. They'll be looking to get to the second round for the first time in their history with their first round game inaugural in their history. A packed out Scarborough, Flamingo Land Stadium, and Wiles to take the kickoff. And we're off. Big Raw meets the kick forward towards this near side. A battle in midfield. Mulhern just trying to get his first battle of the day in. Walegi wins the header. McCann goes up, but it's also flicked on in there. On this left-hand side now, here's Brown. Whips him behind Mulhern. Wiles is also getting towards that back post. It just goes off for a goal kick for the first moment for, for Scarborough to get in Forest Green's half. Yeah, that's absolutely a massive start from Scarborough there uh, with the early cross. But like I said, Forest Green needs to start quickly here. Forest Green take the short option. And a lot of noise around the ground. Scarborough will be looking for that fast start, but it's a forward ball from Welch towards Robertson, but he lets it go. Amatoy chasing. In the end, Kowalta does enough to get the ball back to the goalkeeper of Whitley. Throw in to Scarborough, throws it down the line, Welch heads back forward towards the centre circle. And Maloney keeps the ball moving. Scarborough have the ball in their back line. A couple of people obviously couldn't get tickets today, they are situated upon the hill. In the corner of the ground, packed out Flamingo Land Stadium. And they've been trying to make a lot of noise to try and just unnerve this Forest Green team. Yeah, it's, uh, like, like you just said there, Josh, the noise here is absolutely incredible. Credit to Scarborough. Scarborough. Founded in 2007, a first time at the FA Cup first round. Manager Jonathan Green in former Manchester United and West Brom midfielder. He said, you've got to enjoy the FA Cup, especially with a League Two team coming to our place. AstroTurf here to contend with for Forest Green, something that David Horsman was a little bit worried about. Here in another late score, Barrow 3 1 up against Northampton Town. That was an early kickoff in the FA Cup. Obviously, a big weekend of FA Cup action up and down the country. In terms of the West Country, Bristol Rovers are also in action. They face Whitby at home. So it's a pretty much opposite ends of the country having passed. The Whitby Town coach on the way up, on the way up here to Scarborough. It's a good battle in midfield. Here's Jenks with a little bit of space. Takes a strike, just drags it past the post. That was a good opportunity to strike from distance from Jenks. Would have been a, a top strike to find the corner, but still goes down as a chance for Forest Green. Yeah, it was a pretty poor effort to the lower left hand side of the goal there. Yeah, an opportunity for Jenks just to open his legs in that moment, but just didn't quite get the connection that he would have liked in that situation. 
Whitley able to just let the ball go by pretty easily behind the goal. Cauldron of noise for Scarborough. As you would expect in the first five, ten minutes, it's so important for Forest Green to settle in the way that they possibly can, in the best possible way they can. Here is Jones just helping the ball forward, but can't get the ball too far away. Robson comes in with a header, finds Armatoy. The ball is kept moving back there by Maddox. And a Forest Green able to get on the ball through McCann in the centre circle. He finds Jenks, a heavy touch out of his feet. Robertson not able to get there, but a crunching challenge from McCann. Forest Green do have the ball back. Not simple possession by any means. Turns into a bit of a battle in midfield, but Forest Green do come away with the ball eventually. Two bunker who's playing a left centre back role today. Alfie, interesting role for, for Harvey to have to pick up there. Yeah, it's definitely a different role for Harvey there today, but um, with uh, Frank Hattie Dabo not available today, <laughs> oh, sorry, let's start again, this afternoon, Don Bernard has to go right back, really. So, you know, it's just, just what it is. It, it certainly just points to the, the lack of options they've got in, in certain areas, doesn't it? And the injury concerns do start to mount up, especially when you have got campaign which probably hasn't started in the best way that Forest Green would have liked as well. Yeah exactly and you know November and December are renowned for being busy fixture schedules so if they lose any more players you know it's going to be tough. First port call is Scarborough though and now here's a chance here is Mulhern into the area being marshalled back there does get a ball into the box McCann clears heads as far as Maddox so they keep the ball moving do Scarborough here's Mulhern again Robson Miss kicks first time, but doesn't get it too far away. And Scott, the attack moving through Perver. Now, cutting inside. Here's Brown, opens up, left footed. Gets a free kick on the edge of the area, probably just, just in shooting range for the right foot. Just probably six or seven yards, or five or six yards outside the penalty area. Certainly goes down as an opportunity for Scarborough this. Absolutely massive opportunity here for Scott. Yeah, it certainly goes down as an opportunity for Scarborough from this position. Here is Maloney to take. Going to line it up right-footed. Maloney, a man who is renowned for scoring goals for Scarborough. He is the man who scored in the two previous qualifying rounds to get them to this point. Lines it at right foot of the wall. Quite away into that penalty area. 13 goals for Sark Scarborough in his 60 appearances in league terms. Can Maloney add another one and another FA Cup goal to his list? Here he goes. Strokes it right foot and over the wall and over bar as well but only a couple of yards over nice strike but just didn't have the, the dip on it yeah not an awful effort there from Lewis Maloney but didn't test James Balshaw at all yeah Balshaw able to collect the ball from behind the goal pretty simply just able to let the ball go over the bar lining up in a just letting Forest Green have the ball in possession in the back line but you can see they're trying to just suck them in. Trying to force Forest Green to go long, and they do. It's a nice ball from Welch towards Robertson, who, who's able to keep the ball on and find Jenks. He's driving into the area, backing his defender backwards, and Jenks doesn't get the cross in. Maddox throws his hands in the air, disappointed not to get that ball going across the box there. Forest Green really had to do a lot more, but like, a lot better there. Forest Green, an opportunity, a couple of opportunities so far through Jenks, but hasn't made the most of it so far, the former Brighton man. 
Whitley plays the ball long. Mulhern battles back there, but the ball comes away to Wales and a free kick to Forest Green. Bunker, the man to go down just inside the Forest Green area, but uh, the Forest Green half, sorry. Free kick given, didn't look too much in that, Alfie. No, I didn't think that was really a foul, to be honest. It, it was really, really light. Um, but either way, I mean, if Forest Green are going to go on the attack here with Bombasoy, then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, Scarborough do clear the danger. It wasn't too far, the ball was headed back towards the Scarborough defence, but in the end, easily allowed to go out for a goal kick. As I mentioned, Scarborough manager Jonathan Green in, in charge. A really successful time for the Scarborough-born man. And when you consider Forest Green's position, Scarborough have won 39 league games over the past two seasons. And Forest Green, in 2023, have only won five league games. So Scarborough looking to cause an upset, but also just continue a feel-good atmosphere at Scarborough. But it is Omotoy on the ball. Excellent skill. Lovely ball to find Jenks. Just a fraction over here. Maybe the AstroTurf just isn't it a little bit too quickly. Maybe on grass that could have held up slightly. Maybe just the pitch there, Alfie. Yeah, I like you say, I mean, the Forest Green aren't really used to playing on this with it not being allowed in the EFL, but, you know, they've got to get used to it. Yeah, it is a pitch which Scarborough are certainly used to so far this season. 16 of their 19 points have come here at the Flamingo Land Stadium. Five wins, one draw, one defeat. And obviously a cup run has got them to the first round proper. A win away at Oxford City last time out. Got them to this point. Here is a chance for them. Here is Brown on this left side. He helps the ball towards the back post. Headed clear by Bunker, but only far as Mulhern, who's blocked. Brilliant block from Robson. And the crowd, with a roar, are happy with that Scarborough move. Yeah, that's a great block from Jamie Robson there. It looks certainly goal-bound. Yeah, Mulhern just picking up a great area at that back post. Striking towards goal, but Robson with a really important block. They do keep the ball in the final third, though. Also on Welsh, but very difficult to give that decision given the deflection. Maloney helps the ball forward. Wellergy battling back there. Maddox able to let the ball go out for a throw in. Just in front of the Avocet, the Advocet stand. Packed to the rafters is the stadium today. 586 seats in this 3,251 capacity stadium. North Yorkshire. Forest Green will be looking to go back to the southwest with their name in the hat. But here is Maddox. Aches of space over there for Robertson. Wasn't the best of play. They have a sloppy ball from Maddox, and then the touch wasn't great from Robertson. There was acres of space over there, wasn't there, for Forest Green, if they could have exploited it? Yeah, absolutely masses of space, and especially when a defender makes a slight mistake like that, you know, you have to capitalise on stuff, things like that. Forest Green do have the throw in, though. Here is Maddox on the ball. He finds McCann just inside the centre circle. Long ball towards Robson, just about dealt with. Probably not in the most of convincing ways back there from Thornton, but Forest Green now starting to just get on the ball a little bit more, which will be something that will please Horsman, something they need to do. Wouch, a bit of a miscommunication with Omatoy there. The ball went feet and Omatoy spun in behind and For Forest Green give the ball away. Horsman just pointing towards Welch and just saying probably the long ball is the option. Try and stretch the Scarborough back line. Make it too much of a midfield battle and Scarborough will fancy themselves. 
Here is the free kick on halfway. Looks like they're going to play a long ball towards the edge of the area. Maloney with it. Wellergy rises and wins the header. Qualter and the ball is fired across from Wiles. Had to be blocked because that was flying into the area. Yeah, and here we go with then corner throw of Scarborough. You know, that is exactly the start that they wanted, really. Maybe not the script just yet, but Scarborough are beginning to press. Make it an aggressive game, and you feel like Scarborough could be in business. A young Forest Green side, only six substitutes named. No Dini, no Lavernier, no McAllister. And you take out four or five players in any team on top of the injuries that they already have, and suddenly, and suddenly the team starts to look a bit weak. The ball just was about to be delivered into the box, but referee Mark Edwards blows up for something in the box. So it's take two, or take three, maybe, for the Scarborough corner. To be delivered just housed in front of the Forest Green fans. Delivered front post, Balshaw claims. Comfortable claim from Balshaw in the end, and that was important. They do try and look to get on the break early. Balshaw may be a little bit slow to get rid of that ball, but the header only goes to McCann, who finds Jenks. Balls around us. In the 12th minute. Robson keeps the ball moving. Here is Maddox. 16 minutes, sorry. The applause going up. Scarborough just gives them an extra bit of impetus. Welch with a nice long ball through to Maddox, into the area, gets a strike away, and a weak strike in the end. Ends up bobbling towards goalkeeper Whitley. Lovely ball over the top, but Maddox probably could have made more of that. Yeah, I think he has to do a lot better there, but like you said, a great ball from Rhys Welch. Just a shame that he couldn't quite put the effort away. Yeah, excellent ball from Welch. Everton man, 19 years of age, played a lot of football so far for Forest Green this season. Jordan Moore Taylor remains injured. Innis the same. Forest Green at times down to the bare bones this season and with a couple of injuries to the camp again before today. A couple of muscle injuries, one impact injury. Orsman doesn't seem to be getting the rub of the green with injuries this season. No, not at all. Not at all. Former Southampton B manager also helped Ruben Sellers at the back end of last season in Southampton's relegation, which was pretty inevitable towards the end of the season. Orsman on the backroom staff at Southampton, made the move to Forest Green after Duncan Ferguson's exit in pre-season, which is slightly odd timing. But a change was chosen. Free kick to Scarborough, just inside the Forest Green half. Looks like the ball is going to be planted towards this back post again. Maloney maybe thought about going short. Brown. Just staying as far out as he can to just try and offer that width. But the ball is delivered towards that back post. Here's Thornton, goes up for the header, wins the header, offside flag goes up. You could see as that ball drifted in, he was always going to be the favourite there. Yeah, exactly. It looks like the tallest player on the pitch from what I can see here. Um, here, you know, he's a big unit. Thornton captains. Captains decide today, 47 appearances 
in league terms for Scarborough. Only missed one game this season in the Conference North. Bernard in a battle with Colville, just about keeps the ball on. And Pervert comes in and wins the ball. Here is Mulhern, turns, finds Brown, opportunity to get the ball into the box. McCann was out quickly, and that's so important today, just to stop that ball in. Stop it at source, I think, will be the order of the day for Forest Green. And McCann certainly doing the job that time. Bernard wins the header, but doesn't clear far. Mulhern keeps the ball moving. Perver also does the same. Now Mulhern front to the main stand at Scarborough. Thornton wins the header. Robertson, in the end, gives no challenge. Scarborough able to keep the ball into the 20th minute here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire and via the BBC Sport website. A very tight game so far, not too much in it, and the 42 league places certainly don't look too evident at the moment. Scarborough on the attack again, here's Wallagy. Herbert with not the best of passes, just helping, looking to help the ball forward, but just ended up coming off his shin, and Forrest Green able to get back on the ball, and 20 minutes in, do you think the game's going towards Scarborough's advantage so far? You, you think that they've played a good game so far? Yeah, exactly that. Um, they've obviously got a really, really good home form uh, here in the league, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you expect it with the FA Cup, the lower team tends to come out fighting, and at the moment, that is exactly what they're doing here. And on the attack again, Wellergy with a brilliant little knock and run past the defender. The Forest Green do get away with it that time. Maddox helps the ball forward towards Omatoy, but the ball just skips away on this Astro turf. Scarborough will be happy with their first. The first part of this game. Remember, it is FA Cup first round weekend. Two results last night. Sheppey United 1, Walsall 4. And Barnsley 3, Horsham 3. Certainly a surprise there, but it'll be Scarborough looking to make the surprise here. It's Mulhern finds, finds Brown on this near side. Helps the ball in. Just gets to the byline. Does Wiles just couldn't get the ball into the box? And I believe there has been a goal in the Chatham Town game as well, Alfie. Just a flare up on the front of the main stand, right in front of David Horsman's technical area between Armatoy and Thornton. Just both getting a word or two from the referee. And I believe there was a goal in the Cheltenham game. Yeah, just seen as they've gone one nil down. Um, not who, sure who the scorer is yet, but obviously not a good start for the uh, other Gloucestershire side. Yeah, the fellow Gloucestershire side, Cheltenham Town side, Iraqi international Al Alamadi is the goal scorer for Wimbledon. A break in play gives us a chance to round up as many of the scores with goals in. Alfie? Yeah, so um, obviously the Barrow game finished 3 uh, This is about to finish 3 1. Uh, Bristol Rovers won all with uh, Whitby Town. That was a former Forest Green man who scored for Whitby, Junior Mondale. Um, Wickham won the love at Bradford. Maidstone won the love at Chesham. Uh, Barnet won the love against Curzon Ashton. Doncaster won the love against Accrington. Eastley 2 1 off against Boreham Wood. Leighton Orient won the love against Carlisle. Lincoln won the love against Walkham. Harrogate won the love away at Marine. Newport won the left at home against Oldham. Notts County won all with Crawley. Oxford United won Maidenhead nil. Um, I'd say the pick of the, pick of the bunch so far is Aldershot 3, Swindon nil. And here is Jenks just into the area. Just got the ball down nicely from Bunkers. Lofted ball, just in the end got away from him. Like I said, Swindon, free scoring Swindon in League 2. 3 nil down at home to Aldershot Town. Three goals in the first nine minutes of that game. Wow. Quite, quite the start for Aldershot. That certainly isn't in an EFL team script when facing the first round of the FA Cup, but 
hasn't really gone to Forest Green script so far. Maybe the FA Cup, the magic, a sprinkling of magic today will give Scarborough that little bit of hope. I oh, mentioned a very, very good home form. Send them pick them pick up the majority of their points in the league. See them sit 16th in the National League North. 15 goals scored, 19 conceded, whilst Forest Green 22nd in League Two. A couple of wins, however, and there's a little bit of confidence around the Bolt New Lawn. A 5 0 win over Colchester. Backed up with a 2 1 win last weekend against Crawley Town. What was a really important three points for David Horsman. What he doesn't need is an FA Cup first round defeat. I feel like a lot of injuries in the camp certainly aren't in his favour, but shouldn't have too many excuses when facing a side two divisions below. And they do have the ball back with Balshaw, just starting the move again. Bunker finds Jones, who comes back into the side today following injury. Plays alongside McCann in there. Bunker helps the ball forward to Wellergy, but easily headed back. And Scarborough get on the attack. David Paulson just threw his hands up in the air a little bit towards that. Bunker forward pass, a little bit aimless in that situation. Mulhern gets up, wins ahead of Bunker, helps the ball back forward. Only as far as Whitley and Scarborough more than matching Forest Green so far. Yeah, definitely. I'd even go as far to say they're on top here. They've had the majority of the chances. You know, Forest Green have only had really maybe one, two shots at best with that Jenks effort going wide early on. Yeah, and it's quite an experienced core of this Scarborough side. And when you it's going to bounce a little bit. And Welch helps the ball back, but here's Wiles. Helps the ball towards goal. Welch gets back there. You could always see on that bounce that it was always going to stop in the AstroTurf. And Welch just didn't quite read it right. Here's Mulhern. Takes around Bunker. Into Wiles. Chance to get a shot off. Inside the area. Shifts it right footed. Strike. Score! The Scarborough have the lead. Brilliant from Wiles. Shifts it onto his right foot. Inside the area. Him. Shifts the yard to space and strikes into the far corner. Scarborough have the lead. Yeah, that's a great finish there into the bottom left corner. Forest Green's been found out there, really. 27 minutes on the clock and Scarborough have the lead. Flair goes off in the home end. Wild celebrations. Brilliant moment for Scarborough. They were just starting to get on top in the game. And Wiles, they just kept the ball moving in the final third. Mulhern kept the ball inside the aerial. Wiles, to his credit, stayed composed. He knew the Forest Green players didn't want to touch him in the area to give away a penalty. And now they have it all to do. Forest Green, aside from the National League North, Scarborough lead against Forest Green and probably deservedly so. They get the ball back again, Maddox just losing it in midfield. And suddenly there's a bite into a couple of challenges, which you're not too surprised to see, Wiles with the goal. And if that doesn't liven Forest Green up, I don't know what will. Exactly that, Josh. You know, the start that they've had, that suits Scarborough right down to the ground in this opening half an hour or so. Forest Green looking to make immediate reaction. Armatour on the ball, finds McCam. Works the ball to Jones. Now McCann again. Just haven't really been able to dictate the play, have they, Forest Green? First real sight of goal, really, from either side. Hasn't been a game littered with chances by any means, but it certainly goes down. It's a very, very big moment for Scarborough. First game in the FA Cup, first round proper. And Wiles could have just made a hero of himself, which is what the FA Cup's all about, but a long time to go 
in this game. Here is Omotoy. Gets a free kick just, just as he turns to get away from Thornton. Just claw back at him. Probably eight or so yards out from the penalty area. Slight angle on it. Is it shooting distance? Um, I would say so, maybe, with Charlie McCann and Callum Jones standing over the free kick. Might be just a little bit too far out, but we'll soon find out. Scarborough with the lead here at Flamingo Land Stadium. As we tick over into the 30th minute of the game, a packed out Scarborough athletic ground. And whether you could sense a little bit of a shock when the teams were announced, it's certainly on now. Forest Green looking to hit back with McCann with the free kick. And as the cheers go up, it was always just started too high from McCann. Didn't have a great deal of pace either, not a great deal going for that free kick. No, not at all. Just over the bar, but, you know, Forest Green really have to dictate the play in the middle of the field throughout the rest of this game now because Scarborough will carry on going into it. Yeah, Alex Walls, the man with the goal. Top scorer for Matlock Town. Not too long ago, but also worked with boss Jonathan Greening in their days at Tadcaster Albion, a man who's well known to the boss. And he's come up with a big goal for his boss today in that forward line. But all credit to Scarborough, they've not necessarily had it all their own way but they've certainly battled enough and they've taken their opportunity when it comes. Exactly that, and that is the magic of the FA Cup, you know, half an hour or so in, and they're pretty much a better team so far, and obviously the goal, the goal speaks for that. Big test of Forest Green. Big, big test of their resolve, and whether they can come back from this, Borsman will be a little bit worried in that technical area at present. Here is Robertson with a lot of space. He finds Jones just on the edge of the area. Gets his body across and in the end gives away a foul. Maybe didn't have complete control of the ball in that moment. He's so surprised that he didn't get the foul himself. Maybe just a sense of he didn't have full control of the ball and he's just trying to get his body in and wasn't fully in control of the ball, maybe didn't get the free kick in that position, but Jones perplexed as to why he wasn't given the foul there. But Whitley finds a long ball towards Colville. Jones finds Robertson, who does well to find Jenks, helps over the top, Omotoy, he's in on goal, but Whitley just comes out in time, Omotoy he looked like the man to get there first in that moment, but certainly an opportunity for Romatoy if he was just able to get a nick on it past the goalkeeper. Here is Welch to Robertson. Absolutely fired into him, but Robertson's touch was excellent. Now here is Jones to Omatoy. He finds McCam. Onto that far side for Robson. Shapes to, to whip the ball into the box, but instead comes back to McCann, who does find the ball into the box. And Omotoy, a little bit flat footed, maybe a little surprised that the ball came in from Charlie McCann from, from deep, but Omotoy just anticipated that fraction quicker. I don't think the Scarborough defence were too alive there. Ball hammered. Long by Whitley. Here is Perver. Finds goalkeeper Whitley again, who looks to shape to find Wellergy on instead. Fires down the middle towards Colville. Perver keeps the ball moving. Colville a little bit heavy on the ball out to Brown, but he's able to retrieve just in front of the dugouts. Here's Perver. Bernard finds Jones. Shrugs off a couple of challenges in that midfield. Heavy challenge on him as well, but 
gets the advantage. Bernard finds a lovely ball towards Robertson. Touch inside. Finds Omatoy. Looks to shift that yard of space. Finds Jenks. To Robertson. Whips in. Front post. Good header away. <laughs> By the Scarborough defender. Goudra, I think the man. Stooped low just to head back where it came from to give Forest Green an opportunity from the corner. Send the, the two centre-halves up of Welch and Bunker, who do represent probably the aerial presence for Forest Green today. Corner comes in from Maddox. Easy in the end for Whitley. There's only one man coming around the back post, and that was Robson. In the end, quite easy to claim. Had to stretch slightly, but he did the job there. Yeah, exactly that. And I mean, playing it to Robson, he's probably one of the shortest players in that team for Forest Green this afternoon. So it was an interesting corner, but quite easily gathered by the goalkeeper. Perver keeps the ball moving. Here is Mulhern. Perver to Colville. Mulhern now. A little touch inside, into the area. In the end, a little bit too forceful. It was a good tackle from Robson. Maybe not knew a great deal about it, but he certainly got his body in the way, and then Mulhern just almost ran into him to get give the free kick away. Scarborough just like looking to continue their run in the FA Cup, but had to come through three rounds already with a couple of replays in there to boot. A 3-0 win over Farsley Celtic at home. Away, away win against Darlington, 2-1. And overcoming Oxford City in the last round. Tuesday night down in Oxford City. I think a few Scarborough fans thought that their FA Cup run was over in that Late goal went in here at the Flamingo Land Stadium. A long straight ball to Mulhern. A little bit easy. From a Forest Green perspective for Whitley, just to bang the ball down centre of the pitch towards Mulhern. But here is Colville, keeping the ball moving. Forest Green do get back on the ball. Here is Omatoy. Difficult pass to get hold of for Maddox. Good challenge goes in there. That will certainly get the crowd involved again it's just something when the ball is in the middle of the pitch they probably have had just that little bit more bite and it's something that you can't be too surprised with a non-league side when that is the case yeah exactly that again josh cross stream just back on the ball here is welch two bunker 37 minutes on the clock. It's Scarborough 1, Forest Green Rovers 0 in the FA Cup first round on BBC Radio Gloucestershire and the BBC Sport website. Forest Green looking to avoid the upset, but there was just a sense that maybe they haven't got the strongest lineup out there today. A couple of injuries in the camp, and now they're in a position where they've got to show a lot of character come back from this only a goal and that's important to stress that a lot can happen and a lot of time left in the game more importantly for Forest Green Scarborough just settling into a shape can Forest Green find a way through right on the centre circle with Bunker no need to force the issue he finds Welch Just a, a case of keeping the ball moving at the moment for Forest Green. Welch finds Maddox. A bit more space for him that time. Now McCann. He looks on the far side. But Robertson has picked up some space. He fires an effort across. Ooh. Whitley was diving towards that far post, but in the end, a couple of yards wide and probably didn't need to go for the dive. No, I don't think so there, but um, again, it wasn't too bad an effort from long range, but 
you know, keeper probably had it covered, regardless of whether it's going to be on target or not. Yeah, and Whitley can just take a little bit of time over these goal kicks now, can't he? It's certainly something that you don't want to see creep into the game too early on in the game. You still need to offer a, a threat, but in all fairness to Scarborough, they've got themselves in a position. Can they hold on to it until the break? Something Jonathan Green will be stressing to his players. Going at half-time in the lead. And you're in the game. Here's Wellergy. They could go two in front. He cuts inside, left-footed, strikes. Great save from Balshaw. Big, big moment in the game. Wellergy, brilliant move on the Scarborough right. And Balshaw had to be alert. Cuts inside onto his left foot. And in the end, fired the ball straight at Balshaw. It was a great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely massive opportunity. But credit to Balshaw for making the save there just in the end just patted the ball away did all he could it was a forceful effort from Wellergy with a little bit of more composure in that final third Scarborough probably should have doubled their tally here Forrest Green in a little bit of trouble Troy Deeney not on the bench today He's in the player-coach role. Just giving a few words to Boss Horsman. Long ball over the top, looking for Bernard. Whitley mops up back there and claims pretty easily. 40 minutes played, five minutes until the break. Scarborough remain. A goal in front here at the Flamingo Land Stadium. Big booming ball towards Mulhern. Let's the ball bounce as well, which does get ahead on it in the end, but it's in the final third still, Mulhern. It's a great touch at his feet from Brown. But Welch with a fine tackle and suddenly the break's on. Here is Jenks. Finds a lovely ball to McCann who helps the ball on towards Maddox. Move breaks down in that final third. Maddox just trying to be a little bit too cute that time. Help, trying to help the ball on towards Robertson's path. In the end, probably should have just taken a touch inside and got the shot off. Here is Welch. Omatoy. An opportunity to break for Forrest Green, but they would be desperately disappointed not to force Whitley into a little bit more work in that Scarborough goal. Ball overturned in midfield, Perver gets on the ball and Omotoy gives away the free kick. That will just help, help get them to the break. Referee Edwards just saying he tried to play advantage to Perver who hit the deck, but in the end, the free kick goes to Scarborough and Whitley to take. Probably only 15 yards inside the Scarborough half, which means you know which way this ball is going. It's a deep kick towards Wellergy. He rises, but so does Robson, wins the header. Forest Green have the ball back deep in their own half. Here is Bunker to Balshaw, being closed down by Wiles. But Balshaw stays calm on loan from Bristol Rovers. The man who was on emergency loan continues to be extended while Luke Daniels has a bit of trouble with an injury not too far away so by the time Tramir comes around it was expected that Balshaw will probably be back at Bristol Rovers while Luke Daniels comes in bit of a blow for the man on the bench Jamie Searle who's had a couple of impressive moments in the, in the trophy the Bristol Street Motors trophy has been renamed this week formerly the Papa John's trophy which Forest Green are in action on Tuesday it's a quick turnaround to that game but they will be focusing on the here and now and that is a goal down in North Yorkshire to Scarborough. 
certainly will go down as one of the shocks of the round if Scarborough are able to hold on. A lot of football still to be played. And Forest Green do have the throw in. The Adverset stand opposite the main stand here at the Flamingo Stadium. Forest Green fans housed in one of the corners behind the goal, behind Balshaw's goal. As you look at it, but with the 460 mile round trip, that didn't quite sell all the tickets. So it's a case of Scarborough, understandably so. In the case of Scarborough, making up the other side behind the goal as many clamoured for tickets for a big, big game in Scarborough. And what can Forest Green do to try and change the tide, Alfie, in the uh, in the second half? I do think if you have to look at you have to look at the bench. I mean, you've got Oli Solly, who obviously uh, scored a hat trick here against Tame United in the FA Youth Cup last week. Uh, last week, um, you got Nathan Holland on the bench, who well, obviously has only just returned from injury. So, it, like you know, you might, you might not get many minutes at all. But you know, if the game if the game hangs in the balance, you might need that little extra bit of quality. Yeah, Nathan Holland just coming back from injury. Whether he'll be risked today. The board for added time goes up. One minute of added time. And Scarborough may just have one last chance with a long throw. Brown, first real time we've seen the long throw. But why not with 45 second left, seconds left of this first half? Thornton, captain, is going to be the target. Ball goes in, Thornton battles for it. Free kick given against Thornton, I believe. And Forest Green have the free kick. 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Forest Green need something to change in the second half there to avoid upset. Goal just going in before the break. Elsewhere, AFC Wimbledon 2, Cheltenham Town 0. Fellow Gloucester side also having a bit of trouble on the road. And there is the half-time whistle. Scarborough lead Forest Green Rovers. 42 places between the two in the footballing pyramid, but absolutely nothing between them on the football pitch, except a goal, obviously. But Mr Wiles he took it perfectly just shifted a, a yard of space in the area and got his strike off and gave no chance for Balshaw and it is Scarborough who lead at the break yeah it's that midfield creation I think is the problem at the moment Josh. The, the two strikers aren't really getting me, much of a look in so far maybe that'll change in the second half though it will need to change in the second half if Forest Green are to come away with something from the game. They're not after points this weekend, they're after a slot in the next round of the FA Cup. Maybe a little bit similar to St Albans of two years ago. Yeah, I was there, as, there as a fan for that one. And um, I, I think if you looked at that one in the long run, it might have paid off for the league winning campaign. But we'll see, we'll see what the second half brings. Scarborough to their credit, have been excellent in that first half. They've battled at every opportunity. Forest Green have made it a bit of a fight in there, in the midfield. They've been more than up for it. And the Sea Dogs are out in numbers today, as expected. First ever time in the first round proper for Scarborough. And they're certainly making use of that. Tickets by leading. When you do look at the bench, Searle, Bendel, Thompson, McKenzie, Holland and Sully, do you feel, Alfie, that there is enough there to, to change the tide in this game? To be honest, I'm not quite sure, Josh, yeah, especially with the inexperience of that bench. You know, like I mentioned, like, well, Alfie Bendel, Zach McKenzie, Ollie Sully, Jesse Thompson, you know, they're, they're all youth players at the end of the day. And when you are looking at the stats as well, Forest Green just edging possession with 54%, but Scarborough, seven shots, three on target, whilst Forest...
four shots, one on target. That probably does just strike of how the game's probably gone. Yeah, exactly that. And, you know, like we said earlier, the, the start was so, so important for Forest Green. The start was very important. It's something that Forest Green didn't quite get right. You look at the subs bench, Nathan Holland is the standout. Lewis Maloney scored the two winners in the previous rounds, but has Alex Wiles done the same for Scarborough? We'll find out in the second half. And just a final one, Alfie. What is the first thing that Horsen will say to his team? I think I think he's gone in there and he'll have to say to, to be more creative. At the end of the day, you know, he just said there about having only a one shot, a to, a one shot on target so far. One shot on target for Forrest Green at the break. They look to the subs bench, who are out warming up as we speak, but Alex Walls has the big moment of the game in the 27th minute. Sent Scarborough fans into raptures. First time at first round. And Forest Green have got to come from behind if they're to get into the second round here at the Flamingo Land Stadium. It's Scarborough 1, Forest Green 0. Steve Kitchen. BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Well, what a disastrous first half of FA Cup football for our two Gloucestershire Football League sides. Cheltenham Town trail 2-0 at AFC Wimbledon in the first round of the FA Cup. Forest Green Rovers trail 1-0 at Scarborough in the after 45 minutes of their game this afternoon as well. The National League North side are taking the lead there in the 27th minute. Uh, against Forest Green Rovers and uh, Cheltenham Town uh, trailing 2-0. Alamadi uh, win the 23rd and James Tilly just before the break there uh, putting uh, Wimbledon 2-0 up against the Robins. Not very good news either, I'm afraid, at uh, Gloucester City's game against Warrington. They also trail by two goals to nil at the break. Connor Woods in the third minute and Josh Amos in the 25th, uh, the goal scorers for Warrington Town. And uh, the... Uh, the well, it's just, it's a real tough afternoon. Let's hope Sirencester can hold on to a 1-0 lead. They've got Jake Lee in the 37th minute uh, scoring the goal uh, for Sirencester at home to Hadley. Uh, so they are only leaders at the moment in our top football games this afternoon across our Gloucestershire teams. Last night, Bishops Clue drew one all against Bristol Manor Farm in the Southern League Division 1 South. In rugby, uh, Cinderford are having a great afternoon. They are eight points to seven up at half-time at Richmond. Uh, Matthew Jones' try earlier on with a penalty on top, uh, putting Cinderford 8-0 up. Uh, the uh, uh, home side, though, uh, getting a converted try back, but Cinderford holding on at the break. It's Richmond 7, Cinderford 8 at the latest scoreline there. Uh, let's have a look down through the Premier League goals then scored so far today. Bruno Fernandes scored the only goal of the game in the lunchtime kickoff as Manchester United were 1-0 winners at Fulham. That goal coming in the 91st minute of the game. Their heartbreak for the home supporters. In the 3 o'clock games, it's Brentford 1, West Ham United 2. Neil Mopé with his first goal in 45 games uh, got Brentford off to a dream start there, putting the home side ahead. Celebrations like he'd scored the winner in the World Cup final for Mopé. That was the relief from getting that goal for Brentford. But unfortunately for the home supporters, West Ham have scored twice themselves. Uh, Mohamed Kudis and Jarrah Bowen getting the goals for the Hammers. Uh, they lead 2-1 at Brentford at the break. Elsewhere, it is Burnley nil, Crystal Palace 1. Geoffrey Schlupp on the score sheet for Palace. Uh, Brighton thought they'd had an equaliser at Everton, but Everton lead 1-0 against Brighton at the break. Vitaly Mikhelenko with the goal for the Toffees. Brighton thought that Lewis Dunk had scored, but it went to the dreaded VAR who decided that uh, Dunk was offside. So Everton lead by a goal to nil at Goodison this afternoon. Manchester City 3-0 up against Bournemouth. It took them a while to break the seal, but once they did, the goals started flowing. Doku in 30, Bernardo Silva on 33 and Akanji on 37. Uh, those, the goal scorers uh, for Manchester City. Uh, yes, he hasn't got on the score sheet yet, but um, there is another 45 minutes to go <laughs> before Haaland uh, might just... Uh, take a rest uh, but at the moment Manchester City 3-0 up against Bournemouth at the break and there are no goals between Sheffield United and Wolves at half time as well uh, those are the goals then today in the Premier League as things sit at the moment let's have a rundown through the FA Cup then and we'll start with our commentary matches 
where it's been a very difficult first half for both of our Lee Football League sides. Cheltenham Town are at AFC Wimbledon and trail by two goals to nil. And that's flicked on. Looking here for Al Hamadi. Shooting chance for Al Hamadi. Goal for Wimbledon. Right through the heart of the Cheltenham Town defence. The flick on Al Hamadi was away. And he's fired low into the bottom right-hand corner of Luke Southwood's net. AFC Wimbledon won Cheltenham nil. Ball play forward looking for Tilly. And Ferry needs to get there. And uh, Tilly's got a, a hook on it. And he's got it into the back of the net. The ball played over the top. And James Tilly got there before the goalkeeper and defender just stuck out a leg. And he's hooked it over them both. Yeah, ball's played over the top. Causing Cheltenham Towns defence all sorts of problems. And Cheltenham Towns forwards not causing AFC Wimbledon any. AFC Wimbledon of League 2-2. Two, two. League 1 Cheltenham Town nil. That game on DAB here on BBC Radio Gloucester and also online via the BBC Sport football pages. On FM, on AM and on Freeview 735. Forest Green Rovers are 1-0 down at Scarborough. Here's Mulhern. Takes around Bunker, into Wiles, chance to get a shot off. Inside the area, shifts it right-footed, strike, score! The Scarborough have the lead! Brilliant from Wiles, shifts it onto his right foot, inside the area, and strikes into the far corner. Scarborough have the lead. First time Scarborough have ever been in the first round of the FA Cup. They lead the National League North side by a goal to nil against League Two Forest Green Rovers. That's the way our commentary matches have gone. Elsewhere at the break, it's Alfreton nil, Worthing nil, Bolton Wanderers one, or Solihull Moors nil, Bradford City nil, Wickham Wanderers two, Bristol Rovers four, Whitby Town one, Cambridge United one, Bracknell Town nil, Chesham United nil, Maidstone United one. It's Chester nil, York City nil, Curzon Ashton nil, Barnet one. Doncaster Rovers 1, Accrington Stanley 0. Eastley Lee Boreham Wood by three goals to one. It's goalless between Exeter City and Wigan Athletic. Gillingham 1 0 up at Hereford United. Leighton Orient 1, Carlisle United 0 is a half time score. Lincoln City 1, Morecambe 1. Marine 1, Harrogate Town 2. Newport County, one, Oldham Athletic, nil. Notts County, one, Crawley Town, one. Oxford United, one, Maidenhead United, nil. Peterborough United, nil, Salford City, one. League one side going 1-0 uh, down to Stephen Mullins' goal for the League two side, Salford City. Could be a surprise on there. Port Vale, nil, Burton Albion, nil. Ramsgate, one, Woking, one. Reading 1, Milton Keynes Dons 1, Scarborough 1, Forest Green Rovers 0, of course we know all about, Shrewsbury 1, Colchester 1, Stevenage 1, Tranmere Rovers 1, Stockport County 2, Worksop Town 1, Sutton United 0, AFC Fylde 1. How about this for a scoreline? Swindon Town 0, Oldershot Town 4, National League Oldershot 4-0 up at League 2 Swindon Town. And Yeovil Town a 2-0 up against Gateshead. That's National League South, 2-0 up against National League at Gateshead. Yeovil Town uh, doing well though, it must be said, at the top of National League South. Those are the half-time scores in the FA Cup as things sit at the moment. You can have your say on your side's performance this afternoon. As always, let us know what you're thinking. Text the word GLOS, G-L-O-S, and your message to 81333. Robbo says of Chatham Town, poor old Clark, he has his work really cut out to polish some of these people that he didn't choose to sign. That's the way I'm going to put it, Robbo. Thank you very much uh, for your message. Uh, not impressed with that first half from Cheltenham Town and uh, the feeling was from our commentary team, neither was Daryl Clark. He's already made one substitution in the first half and it looks like he may well at half-time as well if we're going by his past form. If things aren't looking right, he's not afraid to shuffle the pack and at 2-0 down against AFC Wimbledon, I think that would be a fairly uh, reasonable time to expect him to shuffle again. Uh, let's go back to the Premier League then and get some reaction to the lunchtime kickoff. Bruno Fernandes, can he sort things out? Oh, yes, he can. And in stoppage time, Manchester United get what is surely the winner. 
Jonathan Pearce describing that goal then from Bruno Fernandes in the 91st minute and afterwards he spoke to the midfielder. Well, very well done. You had to wait until very late on in the game. Did you always believe that you could get the victory? Yeah, and I think you could see, you can see it that uh, in the in the goal, the belief of everyone trying to fight for that ball to get the ball back. Uh, I think it was me, Scott, Belly, everyone was there fighting for the ball, and at the end we could we could get a, get the ball. I could get the shot, and uh, we, we we get the goal and uh, uh, secure the three points. There seemed to be an extra bounce in your step once you chased back with Paulinha and won that challenge just moments before you scored. Both of you came out smiling. It was a lovely moment. No, of course, because before he said he didn't, he hadn't, he hadn't touched me, and he wanted a fall there. And I said to him, "You're a strong man, so you have to get up now because I'm skinny. You're not. You have 90 kilos. I'm, I'm a little bit less than that. So he's a good mate, uh, someone I have played together in sporting. He's, he's being playing with me in national team too. So I know he's a fighter. I know he's." he's a great player he likes this kind of challenge and, and it was just about that smiles on your faces today after a grim week last week how important was this today oh really important is obviously we know the position we are we know that we get we need to get results uh, it was really massive important for us to get the three points today because um, the situation is not the best and uh, we need to get points we need starting to build something and uh, when I mean build something we, I know we've been saying this a lot of times but we need for, to start from somewhere and uh, it's no time to look back now and look forward because big games are coming ahead when uh, we have to win all of them how, how big for you today was Harry Maguire at the back? I think it is it was it was good it was really important for us in the long balls fighting with the defenders but I think we have to also give some credit to Johnny I think he did really well and Rafa when he came on he was he was ready for the fight he was ready to help the team I think everyone is being important I don't want to um to focus too much on on one player but I know uh, everyone is being too too much critical with uh, with Harry and and he's doing really well now. Uh, everything we want is him to carry on his performance. Is 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 a player that can help us, and uh, I hope that he can he can keep the level. And this is what makes everyone improve even more. Uh, the ones that play in his position will improve. Uh, that's where Lee Bruno Fernandez there with his thoughts after scoring the winner for Manchester United in the lunchtime kickoff. Time to go back to our commentary matches here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. We're with Forest Green Rovers and Cheltenham Town in the FA Cup, both trailing at the break. If you're uh, listening on DAB and online via the BBC Sport pages and the BBC Sport app, it's Cheltenham Town at AFC Wimbledon where the Robins trail by two goals to nil. Your commentary team is Mark Halliwell and first Peter Matthews. Here on 14.13 AM on FM and Freeview 7.35 and also via BBC Sport, you can hear Forest Green Rovers at Scarborough. The Rovers' side of League Two trailing by a goal to nil at the break against uh, the team from the National League North. Uh, lots of uh, thoughts, I'm sure, from the management and coaching team at the break. Cam Rovers, turn it around. You'll find out first here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire with Alfie Ryan and Josh Evans. Thank you very much, Steve. You join us just as the play has kicked off. Ten or so seconds in, and you haven't missed too much. Forest Green just getting on the ball as the lights starting to take shape. It's one of those under the floodlights jobs with the clocks having changed not too long ago. It turns from murky and drizzly into the night sky but Forest Green have started better in the first 30 seconds sharp play and Maddox into Robertson before Robertson gives it away pretty cheaply but he wins the ball back more importantly finds Bernard Calm Jones just picking up a nice area there just cutting inside but better intensity in the first minute or so from Forest Green they now find the ball back with Bunker, but it's so important that they start the second half with that intensity. They don't need to get to the 60th minute mark, 70th minute mark, still chasing a goal. They need to come out with a little bit of something extra to try and avoid that shock. You can see the back five of Scarborough sitting with the back with the front with a, a four in midfield as well. It's going to be very difficult to get through, almost asking Forest Green just to try and break us down now. She can completely understand. Bunker finds Robson 
on Forest Green left. Finds Jenks with a nice touch with the chest. Turn in one movement, but Jenks just being crowded out in the end, but a better start from Forest Green. Yeah, absolutely. I think this opening minute or so, second half, you know, that was exactly the start the Forest Green needed in the first half, just to dictate the play a little bit more. Dictating the play is certainly something that they weren't able to do in the first half. Just the midfield just unable to really get a foothold in the game. They didn't do it early enough. They allowed Scarborough a couple of opportunities just to have sight as a goal, not necessarily to force him bow short into too many saves, but Scarborough know that the shock is on. David Horsen desperately doesn't need an FA Cup first round exit on the CV as Forest Green manager, already a little bit of pressure coming. Having been relegated from League One last season in the manner that Forest Green did, Horsman, a breath of fresh air in the summer. Maybe not having the perfect prep of pre-season to get his players absolutely drilled to the levels that he would like, but at the same time, Forest Green currently find themselves in a bit of a relegation battle and also on the end of what could be a, a first round shock, Alfie. Yeah, exactly that. And obviously going into Zambia next week, you know, that's an absolutely crucial game in the league. Yeah, and what they don't need is going to Tranmere out of the FA Cup as well. Yes, it would focus more on league matters, but it would be a disaster if they go out of the FA Cup at the first round of asking. When you consider it was South Shields last year, a game where Connor Wickham scored from the halfway line, something that certainly did the rounds on social media. Big challenge in midfield. McCann picks up the loose ball, but Thornton comes over and intercepts the play. Almost like a forceful pass right down the side. Almost like a block tackle, but Balshaw able to come out and get the ball keep the ball moving it's the most important thing they need to try and keep the ball in play as much as possible try and give Scarborough as little break as possible as they try and get into shape Bunker with the long ball forward towards Robertson it's a good ball there was a hand in there and Robertson just got tripped maybe didn't have control of the ball which is probably why and Jonathan Greenham with a couple of beautiful touches just reminding us of the player he once was, former Manchester United and West Brom midfielder. But yeah, just at the other end, Robertson, was there any was there any clip? Would you think there was any call for a penalty? I think that's quite soft, to be honest, Josh. I don't think that is a penalty, on my, in my own opinion. Yeah, quite a good angle from where we are housed here, here in the main stand. Jenks just doing enough to get the ball to, towards Omatoy. Good challenge back there, and McCants quickly gets onto the loose ball, driving towards the edge of the box. Now Armatoy comes back. Ball helped towards the back post, but brilliant. Little chest back there from Bailey Gouda. Brilliant awareness. Knew that Robertson wasn't breathing down his neck, and just helped the ball back to his goalkeeper. Ball lofted. Long towards Wellergy. It's been... A feature so far, Mulhern battles with Welch, but the ball drops nicely for Colville. High boot back there on Colville. Probably just bounced a little bit too high to throw a boot back there, and understandably so, the referee, Mark Edwards, just calls, calls about for a free kick. Bunker judged to take it either too fast or with a moving ball. And they have to take again. A little bit of intensity needed from Forest Green. Scarborough lead in one of the big shocks of the round if it continues to go in the way that the first half did. Bunker afforded a lot of space to try and run into, but almost asking Bunker to try and make something happen as they settle into shape Do Scarborough. Tries to force it that time with a lofted ball over the top. Hands in the air from the manager. But they get on the loose ball, more importantly. Here's McCann, now to Jenks. 
takes it round one man, past the second, but now afforded the space on this left side for Forrest Green. Now finds Robson. Ball comes back towards McCann, but Perver anticipated it. It got out quickly to McCann. Former Leeds United youth man in the middle midfield. Number eight in the engine room. Here is Welch, finds Jones. Now to Jenks. Got space on the outside is Robertson. Helps the ball towards that. So Omatoy heads, loops in. And save. He looks a bit unconventionally by the goalkeeper of Whitley, but almost took a couple of steps back towards his goal from the looping header from Omatoy. But in the end, Omatoy did just about enough to get that on target. Yeah, he did quite well there, to be honest. For someone that doesn't really tend to head the ball too much, you know, he's not one of those aerial strikers like Troy Deeney or even Matty Stevens, for example. Yeah, Matty Stevens, one man. Both strikers sidelined for today's game. Leaves Forest Green down to the bare bones. Scarborough have absolutely made use of that. 53 minutes on the clock. Currently, Scarborough 1, Forest Green Rovers 0. Live on BBC Radio Gloucestershire and via the BBC Sport website. Forest Green looking to avoid that shock. Scarborough certainly looking to make one. They haven't really had too much in the second half, Scarborough. But what they have done is just diligent in their defending afforded little space for Forest Green and you're looking at those technicians in that midfield, Maddox, McCann, Jones, can they get on this ball rather than having your centre-back having to make up most of the play? Welch down the side for Robertson, the inevitable flag goes up just as Robertson takes a touch of the ball and you are asking those midfield players just to try and dictate the play, it's something they haven't been able to do for the best part of an hour. Yeah, I was going to say, you can see it from where we started in the second half so far, that, you know, the passing is OK, but it's that intensity that you mentioned earlier that we really, really need at this point. Ball help towards the far side for Wellergy, but ball trickles out of play. Deep in the forest green half. Ball cleared by Robson towards Amatoy, but comfortable header back by Qualter, back where it came from, towards Robson's side. He has another throw in. This time, just lacking a few options. So he goes down the line. Wellergy heads the ball back towards Mulhern. He gets on the ball, just shifts the ball down the line, but right beneath the dugouts. The woolly-hatted Jonathan Greening. A lot of success here at Scarborough. Highest ever finish in the club's history last season, eighth place in the National League North, 16th this time around in the National League North, but something they will be looking to improve. Their home record is outstanding, suddenly up there with playoff positions. Maddox just getting dispossessed there, Amatori. Almost fell for his path, but Whitley in the end able to get on the ball pretty comfortably. Ten minutes into the second half. And Whitley hammers the ball forward. Fan just in front of us saying, Whitley, think about it. Not trying to play as much in the second half. Certainly going to be try and break us down, Forest Green. The League Two side, 42 places above them in the pyramid. Forest Green on the ball again in the centre circle through Welch to McCann. It's been a lot of this play so far in the second half. It's Bit of a tactical battle. Bunker. A few touches. He drives further up the pitch, but then in the end comes back towards Welch. You're almost just asking Bunker to try and be a little bit more ambitious with his pass there. You don't want to force it, don't get me wrong, but 
there is a pass forward which was probably a little bit forced and the move breaks down well we've just seen it there with the uh, long ball into the goalkeeper by the looks of it there um, but you know like I've just said a minute ago they need, to, they need to be much more intense if they're going to get anything out of this tie Whitley able to claim the ball put the ball down and play the ball forward Wellergy wins the header but Balshaw the man to claim Horsman just taking a few steps back into his technical area now just taking stock of the first parts of this second half, which have gone long in Forest Green's possession, but not really doing much with the possession at the moment. Not too much in the way of press from Scarborough. They are trying to invite a little bit of pressure here. Is it a little bit too early to do that? They have got to try and have that threat at the same time going the other way. Here is Omatoy into the area. Good from Bernard Jenks. Stooping low. Looks certain to win that header, but a brilliant block back there from Qualter. Just, just did enough to get across there. Now here's Colville to Mulhern. Back to Perver. A little bit of pressure on him from Jenks. Ball breaks loose. Here's Wiles. Turns. And gets a free kick. And that will get the fans back involved again. A free kick, which, albeit from a quite a distance from, from goal, just allows a little breather for Scarborough and just says to Forest Green, we are still in this game to, to pose a threat the other end. Well, I think the fans there have just made it quite clear that um, they are still in this game, you know, pushing for a second goal. Um, obviously, Forest Green dictating the play in the first uh, in the first sort of 10 minutes or so of the second half. You know, it's quite down a little bit, but here we go, free kick. That ball is helped towards the area, towards the back post, and Balshaw able to come and claim. Maloney, the delicate ball over the top, just asking for somebody to try and get on the end of it. Just the bounce just slows the ball down. Balshaw able to claim quite simply. Welch on the ball. Few touches. Gets into the halfway line. Bunker. Speculative all over the top, but that time a little bit more quality to Robson. Just now asking for a bit of support on the forest green left. Finds Omatoy. Good tackle in there. An excellent skill from Maloney. Just a nutmeg and get the ball into Mulhern, who does excellently to hold the ball up. Slightly over the top on Robson, but Forest Green have the ball. Here is Omatoy. Excellent bit of skill. Bit of footwork from Omatoy. Keeps the ball moving. Now here's Jones. Touch out his feet. Into Maddox. Back to Jones. Right on the byline. But Jones just runs out of pitch there. But a good move from Forest Green. Yeah, I couldn't tell whether that was just overplayed or maybe Jones hadn't quite got the pace to get to the ball. Yeah, Jones maybe just would have stretched a bit too far to try and help that ball in. As I said, Scarborough, successful few years under both Greening and as a club. The 2017-18 season was the first time they were back in Scarborough after years at neighbouring town Bridlington. The Wingo Land Stadium became their home after 10 years in exile. And then following on from that, the 2021-2022 season where a National League North promotion, promotion to the National League North was matched with a North riding senior cup win famous double for Jonathan Greenham very popular manager and a popular man in these parts they lead Forest Green but it is the visitors who are pressing through Robson now here's Bunker right footed delivery into the box headed out and now here's Mulhern. Can he hold the ball up? Yes, he can. He can get a foul just to get the play. And is it becoming a bit of a pattern so far? It's Forest Green having the possession, not doing much with it, and then the ball goes into Mulhern. He's clever enough to keep hold of it. He's also strong enough to, to hold off the defenders, and Scarborough able to get up and then 
and suddenly a couple of minutes go by. Yeah, I genuinely think that Forest Green could really do some words and taste coming off the bench here, but I've just had a look down at the dugout and it looks like Nathan Holland is speaking to one of the analysts, so maybe that injection of taste might be coming soon. Yeah, Nathan Holland's certainly a man who they can ask for and get a bit of pace from. Former MK Don's man injured of late, but here is Omatoy on the forest green left, helping the ball into the box. But the ball is cleared far enough out for a forest green throw in. Here is Maddox, now to Robson. Helps the ball into the box, slightly blocked. Here's Jones, lovely effort just over the bar. It's a hands on head moment, forest green bounced beautifully for Jones on the edge of the box. A lovely strike, but just over the top. Yeah, really good effort there from Callum Jones. But like you say, just over the top, so still 1-0 Scarborough. Yeah, still 1-0 Scarborough is the key. Here is a change coming by the looks of things for Forest Green. And it is that man, Holland, as you mentioned. And that is not a like-for-like -like change whatsoever. It is... Centre back Reese Wouch, who makes way. I wonder if that will then lead to a system change. It looks like Sean Robertson's just taken on the right hand side and Don Bernard's moved into centre half with Harvey Bunker. Yeah, position that Don Bernard will know well. He's deputised for those players who they have had out Jordan Moore Taylor, Reece, Ryan Innes. But is also was a popular figure in that promotion winning side. Played at the right of three centre backs that season. In a very, very good season, Forest Green, a famous one under manager Rob Edwards. First season at League One level probably didn't go to the script of how they would really have liked it to go. And ever since, it's been 18 months pretty much feeling defeats after most Saturdays for most fans, players, staff of Forest Green Rovers. Scarborough fans just getting behind the side. Really important time. Here is an extra bit of space on that right now for Sean Robson. He's playing a little bit deeper. Helps the ball down the line for Holland, who's given offside, one of those just teases us, the linesman. Is he onside, is he not? And the ball gets to Holland and the flag goes up. Now Whitley to take the free kick just outside the area where the offside was given. Long ball where Bernard deals with it, but Mulhern does take a strike on goal. Did that take a deflection? No, it is a Forest Green throw-in. Balshaw thinking about taking the throw-in for a second, I think, but understandably so leaves it for Robson to take. And there is a change for Scarborough as well. It is Dom Ter to come on. And that man, Alex Wiles, gets a big round of applause as he makes his way off the pitch. The goal scorer for, for Scarborough. Big, big day for him and a big, big day for Scarborough. Whilst on the other side of Gloucestershire, I think there's been another goal at AFC Wimbledon, Alfie. Yeah, it sounds like it's um, AFC Wimbledon 4, Charlton 0, with former Forest Green man Josh Davison grabbing the goal. Forest Green doing their best to clear the ball. Just about get away with it. Helps into the main stand, situated towards the top of the stand. Nearly takes out a cameraman, but... Throw in for Scarborough. Here is Wellergy to take. A little quick one-two between him and Maloney. Gets the ball into the front man. And Maloney does get over there and win the ball as well, but Jinx comes away with the ball. 
Colville doing the chasing back there. Bernard coming inside to Bunker. And that is so, so helpful for Scarborough players on the pitch. Fans just starting to get behind them again. No signs of those fantastic cardboard cutouts of the FA Cup here at Scarborough. But they are beginning to dream of a second round place, but Forest Green have other ideas. Here is Robertson on the right hand side. Takes it past his man, maybe a little bit too deep, but delivers a fantastic cross in the end. Here is McCann, takes a touch, right footed, gets it across the goal. Brilliant chance oh. to Maddox and he's put it wide. What a big opportunity for Jacob Maddox. Forest Green should be level through Jacob Maddox halfway through the second half. What an opportunity that was for Forest Green. That was an absolute sitter, Josh. Jacob Maddox really, 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 really should be putting that away. Yeah, they make that six reallys. I thought it was seven. <laughs> suggests that there was a big, big opportunity for Forest Green. They should be level in this game. Brilliant from McCann to get to the byline, get it across goal. But at the same time, Maddox should be putting that away. 68 minutes gone here at the Flamingo Land Stadium. It is still Scarborough 1, Forest Green 0. On BBC Radio Gloucestershire and the BBC Sport website. Just a sense of shock in the air, especially when chances go a begging like that. Now Forest Green come again as the rain just starts to come down here and the wind starts to blow up a little. But so does the referee for a foul to Scarborough. Just inside the Scarborough half. And Alfie, we've got to the midpoint in the second half and Forest Green have created one big opportunity. Is it a case of continuing doing what they're doing or do you, are you looking towards the bench here? Yeah, I'd say so. They, you know, they've created enough opportunities now and really should have found the back of the net with that Jacob Maddox shot. Um, but again, they might look to the bench, you know, Oli Tully, another striker that could come on to potentially provide some uh, goals for Forest Green. And it's goals is what they need. Or maybe as they get towards the end of the game, one will do. And a Tuesday night back at the Bolt New Lawn will have to be the order of the day. What they won't want is an FA Cup exit here in North Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah. Forest Green have the ball inside their own area at the moment. Here's Bernard. To McCann. Finds a lovely ball towards Holland, who's gone a fraction early, maybe half a yard. It just gives us an opportunity to go through those scores. Uh, so I've just heard as well, Wimbledon, Wimbledon have scored a fifth against Cheltenham. Um, Bolton have tuned up against Solly Moores. Wickham tuned up at Bradford. Uh, Bristol Rovers 4-1 up at home against Whitby Steel. Um, again, we spoke about it earlier, but uh, Older shot a 7-0 up against Swindon. Uh, Stockport 2-1 up against Worksop. Um, Reading 2 on the points, MK Doms. Harrogate 3 1 up away at Marine. Gillingham still 1 0 up away at Hereford. Uh, Wigan have now got a goal against Exeter. And Barnett have beaten yeah, Just a moment for Mulhern, just inside the area. He's now a penalty, goes down under a challenge. Looked a 50 50 challenge, was a tight one. Thanks for that, Alfie. And sorry to interrupt, but here he's on the counter attack. Forest Green trying to build through Omatoy. Lovely little step over and gets away from his man. Thornton leaves him in his wake. Another step over, left foot gets across in. And Scarborough do clear the danger, but only as far as Jones, who takes a touch out of his feet. Close down quickly, but gets the ball out to McCann, who's going to deliver towards the back post. Just doesn't get the ball that he requires there. Scarborough get a big head on it, but a bit of end-to-end -end action there for Forrest Green. here behind us those Scarborough fans just starting to get involved 
They can sense a shock could be on. 19 minutes of normal play still left to play. Plus added time for Forest Green to salvage something. Strong defending from Captain Thornton. Just shrugs Omatoy away. And certainly Forest Green will not be happy with it not going all their own way. Goalkeeper Whitley bangs the ball long for Robson to head. He's dealt well with Wellergy aerially today, hasn't he? He comes under a lot of stress in terms of aerial battles, but Robson has dealt with it well today. An oncoming, experienced man. Michael Coulson, the former York City stalwart. He's going to replace Mulhern, who's had a brilliant day leading the line. And certainly, Coulson, a man who you can look at for this sort of moment. 129 appearances for York, 146 League Two appearances with 16 in the championship as well. You are looking at a player in Coulson saying there's a lot more to this player than the sixth tier of English football. But the 35 year old, the local, looking to give Scarborough a little bit of something extra as they go into the final quarter an hour or so of this game. Oh, help down the line from Maloney. Well, he does enough to get a little flick on it, but I think they'll take the foul. I think in that moment, maybe an advantage was there, but... Yeah, I don't think the referee was too sure about that. Um, the decision was really given by the assistant referee. Yeah, Dom Ter was just... just slowed down a fraction, which maybe just took a little bit of momentum out of the play, and in the end, give the referee no choice but to give the foul, but gives Scarborough an opportunity to load that box. They've only left one man back in Perver on the edge of the box, so they are loading the box here. Maloney to take. The referee's whistle goes. Maloney, deep free kick. It's an excellent ball in as well, and the ball flies over the top via a forest green head. What a brilliant delivery that was from Maloney. Yeah, the corner the wall for Scarborough now. Here we go, the pressure is on. And there, there is the shout behind the goal. Really getting behind their team are the Sea Dogs. Amply named Sea Dogs, brilliant nickname. And the ball is fired in towards that near post. Big header away from Armatoy. Fantastic header away, Maloney with another brilliant ball in. Big challenge back there, can Scarborough double their lead to really put the game beyond doubt, really. It's been a really even game. And Scarborough probably just edging it. It's one of those, if you take your chances, you can't argue with the winning team. Forest Green had a lot of possession and probably will do in the last stages. But Scarborough, through Maloney, delivers towards the front post. I think Wellergy down in the area, but no free kick given. Now here's Colville, left-footed, delivers. Just slightly towards the edge of the box. Comes back all the way to Qualter. Helps the ball out towards the Scarborough right, and Robson just trying to get upfield. Pervo, the beautiful ball in. And now here's a chance. Here is Tear, pulls the ball back and Jenks sweeps the ball clear, but only as far as Perva finds Wellergy. Not the best of passes into him, but had enough time to take it, and Perva glides past one, finds Colville, now Wellergy. Going to look to try and shift it right and get a delivery in, he does that, but excellently blocked from Robson, but they've got the ball exactly where they want it, Scarborough. Definitely looks like they're pushing for a second. Just. Well, not nine men in the forest green half already. Exactly that, and 
Forest Green having to do a bit of defending, something they haven't really had to do too much of in the second half, but all credit to Scarborough, they've still got the energy levels to keep going. Maloney, it's an effort on goal. That time, Coulson taking the effort in the end straight at goalkeeper Balshaw. And Forest Green are on the ball again. 13 minutes of normal time plus added time to play. Forest Green seeking an equaliser. Here is Holland, here's Robertson, back to Holland. Brilliant tackle back there as Holland just tried to shift that on the outside. But at the same time, Forest Green, six players in the area as they look to try and get that equalising goal. A little bit of a scuffle there. Perver and McCann involved, just getting a talking to. Doesn't look too much in that. Robertson. Perver comes away with the ball and suddenly the break could be on. It's an excellent ball, excellent idea to try and find tear, but Balshaw was manning his area very nicely as the ball was just slightly over hit. One last rallying cry. Can oh, slip from Perver means McCann's in, strokes towards goal. Great save from Whitley. Wellergy makes sure that the ball gets away from goal. Yeah, it looked like the ball just disappeared away from him. Sorry there. Maybe if he'd have anticipated it a little bit better, he might have got on the end of it. But it's a good save from the keeper. Yeah, Whitley just well, maybe put it into a bit of a dangerous area, but a save that you'd expect your goalkeeper to make, but he certainly did it with a little bit of assurance. Floodlights certainly taking hold now. A sixth tier Scarborough look to cause a shock bunker. Helps the ball back towards goalkeeper Balshaw. <laughs> he finds Robson. Sometimes you feel a bit of a hush will go down in the final 10 minutes. Just hoping Scarborough survive from the home crowd. Bernard with a lofted ball in towards the front man, but Whitley was just maybe a little bit keen to come and claim that ball. Gets a bit lucky as the ball bounces quite favourably in his path. Now he's able to claim. Bunker getting outdone by Coulson. Who gets to the byline, right-footed, cuts back. He lays the ball back, helps towards goal from Maloney, but Wellergy comes away with it, hammers the ball towards goal, and it's another corner. They've got the ball exactly where they want them, and there's the first sighting of that little cardboard FA Cup behind the goal. To the end that Scarborough are shooting towards. And maybe there's just, as each minute goes by, there's just a bit more confidence in the home team. corner to Scarborough whipped in quite deep as Balshaw just does enough to claim appeals that maybe it went out for another corner as he fell backwards but Balshaw able to continue bowls the ball out to Bernard to Bunker and now Jones lovely ball into Holland Helps the ball outside to Robertson. Holland over hit ball towards Jenks, but Jenks does enough to pressure the defender into putting out for throwing. Here's another change. Here's that man Sully, like you mentioned, striking option coming on. Teddy Jenks is the man to make way. He makes way on that far side. He's just walking around the side of the pitch and. It's one of those non-league games where you are that close to the fans, any sort of rivalry or any pantomime villain, you get a bit of stick as he walks around the side of the pitch. 
but can Sully be the man to bring Forest Green level? Here is Bunker, now Bernard. As the minutes tick away here at Flamingo Land Stadium. Now here's Holland picking up a nice position. In comes inside, right footed, cleared by Scarborough. Wellichi helps it away, but not too far. Holland again finds McCann. Tough ball to get hold of from McCann, but does enough. And then an excellent tackle from Maloney, just bites away. And Coulson hammers the ball away. Did it get a touch on it? Doesn't seem likely. As far as Green get the ball moving again. Bunker throws back to Balshaw. Here's Bernard. Bunker to Robson. Lovely ball down the side. Omatoy fractions in front of him. Whitley claims at the second time of asking, but a lovely ball that time from Robson. Just unable to get on the end of it was Armatoy. Hammered forward towards Wellergy. Now here's Holland, keeps the ball, despite close contact from Maloney. Robson slightly either winded or just took a knock to the head. Not ideal for Forest Green as referee Edwards asked them to just take the ball back slightly, 20 seconds or so later. They restart. <coughs> and Forest Green come forward again. Amatoy just sneaks around the back and maybe was just clawed at slightly, but absolutely nothing doing from referee Edwards. Whitley able to take his time over this goal kick. And they'll eke away every second that they can, understandably so. As Scarborough, first time in the FA Cup first round. Maybe advancing through to the second round. They lead 1-0 over Forest Green Rovers. League 2 Forest Green. National League North, Scarborough Athletic. Formed in 2007. Ten years of exile. In a Phoenix club. Playing at Filey. Can they be getting through to 23-24 FA Cup second round? And shows too much of it to Perver and gives away the free kick. And we disappointed with that. Just takes the momentum out of it, doesn't it? Yeah, that's quite poor from the can really. You know, Forest Green looked to be building a little bit of momentum going towards goal, but obviously giving away the free kick has that done all that work. Yeah, Perver just knew the right moment, just to nick in, just take the ball away from McCann and McCann's touch just let it slip away from him as is Forest Green's place in the FA Cup, slipping away with every minute. Four minutes to play, plus added time. Scarborough one, Scarborough Athletic one, Forest Green nil. As they're getting towards the final stage of this match. Here is Bernard. And I believe Cheltenham have got something to celebrate at Wimbledon. Yeah, it sounds like they just got a goal back through Rob Street. However, however, they missed the penalty. <laughs> however, missed the penalty. So two Gloucester sides not having the best of it at the moment. Something to celebrate, but then... Elsewhere in National League North, Gloucester City 3-1 down against Warrington. So Gloucester, Gloucestershire not having the best of it. That could be said. Coulson just asking a little bit too much of Maloney. But applause all around us. Just trying to get their team over the line. They've been excellent today, Scarborough. To a man, absolutely no weakness in their team. 
Forest Green will look at Maddox's big, big chance in the second half if they fail to get an equaliser in the closing stages. Here is Jones, going deep to collect the ball, cutting inside, playing the ball to Holland. Here's Bernard to Holland. Loft the ball over the top. Is Sully onside? He is. Chance towards. Ball loops up into the air and then claimed. Unbelievably, the goalkeeper almost seemed to chest the ball down and then take the ball. Whitley, extreme confidence in that situation. It goes down as a chance for Sully. Brilliant run. Just his effort blocked and it's a big booming ball from Whitley. Can Coulson get on the end of it? If so, the corner is only just there. He certainly can get a hold of it. Great area of the pitch to have the ball. Here's Wellergy. Shifts it onto his right side. And it gets the ball on. Robson blocks. It's a corner kick for Scarborough. Right where they want it. Fans around us. On their feet. Clapping and applauding a brilliant run from Coulson. Then Wellergy getting to the byline, getting a corner. It's exactly where they want the ball, Alfie. Yeah, exactly that, Josh. You know, this could be this could be a do or die for Forest Green now after this corner. Yeah, one minute or so of normal time. Deafening noise around us. Unsurprisingly, the ball is played short to Maloney. And then offside given, not something that was should have happened really from a Scarborough perspective should have held that ball in the corner for a lot longer than they did in the end Forrest Green get on the ball but still a long way from goal big booming crossfield pass from Bernard dealt with by Wellergy flicked on by Maloney tear trying to track down the ball as Forrest Green we're retreating, but Bernard, sorry, Bunker on the ball. To Jones, he looks forward, where's his options? He fires a crossfield pass in the region of Amatoy and Robertson, unable to retrieve the ball. One final throw of the dice. Alfie Bendel is the man coming on. Callum Jones, the man to make way. How many minutes of added time is going to be the key? As the number ticks towards 29, I don't think that'll be 28, sorry. I think that'll be Callum Jones's number and not the minutes of added time. Yeah, for a moment there, I thought that might have been another half an hour of this game. <laughs> Fortunately, from a Forest Green's perspective, it is not 28 minutes of added time. As Alfie Bendel comes on to the pitch for the final stages, big long ball. And Whitley with a great kick again. As the wind just starts to whip up here. Three minutes of added time. That's an excellent number for Scarborough. They, they haven't really wasted too much time, but only three minutes to survive. Forrest Green have three minutes to save their skins here. Here is Bernard, helps the ball towards the back post. But now here's Holland, a couple of yards of space, shifts it onto his right foot, doesn't get the shot away, and instead gives the ball away to Scarborough, who will look to break. Brilliant run on that far side. Now here's Tear to Coulson, bearing down on goal. Bunker comes across, but here he is, Coulson. Goes towards the corner, understandably so. 35 years of age, he's got bags of experience. But he gives the ball away in the corner. And Forrest Green get back on the ball, Bunker. Now here's Holland. Maddox does really well to keep the ball. Finds Robertson, they keep the ball moving here, do Forrest Green. A, one big cheer goes round the Flamingo Land Stadium. As we go into the second minute of added time, Omatoy unable to get the ball, instead, the ball's cleared far enough from Qualter, but the ball is only as far as Bernard. He comes inside to Bendel. Not too many options. Amatoy drops deep, plays the ball towards Bunker. Borsman just hands in the air. As his Forest Green side 
are just minutes away from exiting the first round of the FA Cup. As Scarborough fighting for their lives. They're just asking for a little bit of something extra here, our Forest Green. Bendel fires the ball in towards the back post. Excellent ball back there. Here's a chance for Sully and he scores! Sully, brilliant moment for him. Hattrick in the FA Youth Cup, followed by a brilliant final minute goal. And Forest Green have done it in the final few minutes. Sully with the goal and Forest Green in added time have levelled it. What a fantastic finish and what a moment for the young lad. You know, like you just said there, scored a hat-trick in the AFA Youth Cup last week and now he's just done it on the big stage. Massive, massive moment for number 24. Oli Sully, fantastic moment and Forest Green finally get through. Bendel, beautiful pass across the pitch. I think it was McCann who helped the ball back towards the far post and Sully just taps home where every good striker should be. And he taps home and Forest Green. They've, you could say they've got away with one, but they have found a way and that's the most important thing. I was going to say that they have been, you have seen the chance in the second half. Obviously that Maddox miss was a massive talking point, but what a goal that could be for Forest Green Rovers. 42 places in the pyramid and Forest Green look to have just saved themselves. There may be time for one final little bit of action. Perver flies into a tackle. Here's Bernard to Maddox. But they're unable to keep the ball. Maddox almost gets the, the run of the ball. But now here's Scarborough come again. Is there going to be one last opportunity? Robertson forced to do some defending. And the ball goes across the box. It's goal. It's almost Coulson coming onto the ball, but Bunker almost just passing the ball across the box at their own box in the dying embers of this game. Tear. But Bendel on the ball. Not cleared very far. Here is Tear. Can they get can they keep the ball moving? Bunker back to Balshaw. Surely, surely that'll be it. Referee continues to play. Balshaw bounced the ball forward, headed back towards the centre circle. And there is the full-time whistle. Heartbreak for Scarborough. They've left it all out there. They'll be so gutted not to have won today. But Forrest Green in stoppage time through Ollie Sully have saved themselves and have earned a replay back of the Bolt New Lawn. And breathe, Alfie. Oh, wow. At the end of the day, that, um, David Horseman did say he didn't want to replay, but after that last-minute goal, I think he'd be more than happy with that. Uh, sorry, sorry. What a moment for the youth team striker, Ollie Sully. Big moment for him. He wheeled away in front of that away end. Fireworks just went off behind the corner. Hoping for a Scarborough victory, I think. But at the same time, Forest Green kept going to the end. And if in the end, they found themselves pick up an important draw, which gets them in the hat. But so are Scarborough. They're in the hat for the second round draw. When Scarborough went to Oxford City, they thought they were out with the way it ended. But they went to the replay and they won to get themselves into the first round. They'd be so, so disappointed not to have held on. Just 90 seconds longer. Forest Green get away with one in the final minute. They clap the away end. But what a moment that is for Ollie Sully. Absolutely that, Josh. And like at the end of the day, you know, coming through the academy, Obviously scoring that hat-trick last week in the Youth Cup and then coming here and doing that, wow. Just sometimes strikers know where to be. He certainly did that. Just a couple of yards out, helped the ball home. Whitley was sprawling across his box to try and get something on it in a desperate attempt. But it was a brilliant ball towards the back post, just helped back across, open goal for Sully. But don't get me wrong, he had to be there in a big pressure moment. 
Forest Green were exiting the FA Cup in the first round to National League North, Scarborough Athletic. But they kept going to the bitter end and come away with a replay. Maybe something that Horsman wouldn't have wanted, which we will get his reaction very shortly on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. And it is a replay on a Tuesday night at the Bolt New Lawn. How will Horsman feel about that, do you think, Alfie? To be honest, I think he'd be quite happy with the manner of that in the end. You know, obviously the last minute goal, Forest Green didn't really look in it for most of the game. Obviously, chances here and there in the second half. But, you know, he, didn't, he said he didn't want a replay beforehand, but I think he'd be more than happy with one with now. More than happy with a replay. If you'd have said that at lunchtime today, he had been a very pessimistic Forest Green fan, but they came with a youthful side and they've just, just given themselves a chance to get round, get through to the next round of the FA Cup. The magic of the FA Cup, you thought there was a sprinkling of that today as Scarborough Athletic were just minutes away from booking their place in the second round. The first ever time that they were in the first round, but they have got themselves into the draw for the second round. Uh, another Gloucester score, Cheltenham 5-1. They were beaten by AFC Wimbledon. And as the fans, a little bit disappointed, go away from the Flamingoland Stadium, it almost feels like they've had a defeat, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly that. And I mean, full credit to Scarborough, you know, they really, really took the game to Forest Green for the whole, well, 90-odd minutes. Just that bit of magic at the end, saw the game, you know, level. Yeah, and you look back to a couple of moments, you thought Maddox's miss was going to be a really, really crucial part of this match, but Forest Green just stayed patient, and with one bit of quality in stoppage time, they were able to just get over the line. And I suppose that is a, another... It's just a, a bit of a confidence boost that they can keep going to the end, albeit the opponent's two divisions below, but can just give them a little bit of confidence going in to the other more games in the future, can't it? Yeah, exactly that. And I think if Scarborough would have won, it would have been a massive knock to the confidence of the side. You know, obviously, there was a lot of changes today, but regardless, for the group, I think that is massive to get the, to get the replay in the end, because if we'd have gone out, I think it would have been a lot harder for them to take into Tamiya next week. And it's also something they still want to be involved in, isn't it? The FA Cup Forest Green do not want to exit the first round, do they? Yeah, exactly that. And I mean, since they've been in the Football League, they've like had three wins and three losses in the first round of the FA Cup. So taking that into a couple of Tuesdays' time, perhaps, you know, they might get another win. And they will be looking to try and book themselves into the second round. Will both sides at the Bolton New Lawn, but Scarborough almost, almost there. But in the end, Forest Green found a way to come back here. Finished at the Flamingo Land Stadium. For Scarborough won, Forest Green won. Steve Kitchen. BBC Radio Gloucestershire.